Welcome back to Data Test Tutorials. I'm Carl, and in this video, I'll explain you the general structure of Data Test. So, first, let's start with importing some more uncommon file formats. This, this is a NumPy array. I saved it with a Python function called numpy.save. You don't need to know about this, just know this is a file format which is very common in Data Test. You can just import it through tap and drop. Done. And here we have it. This is an EL image, electroluminescence image of an PV EFG cell. What this is, just forget about it. We can also import raw images. What are raw images? Raw images are images that contain absolutely no information whatsoever about their shape, about their size about the data type used and so on. So in this case we need to set all these things in order to interpret this simple binary array. Here I made a note in order to not forget what kind of array this is. So this is 32-bit signed. It is little Indian order. It has a width of 512 pixel and a height of 640 pixel. Where we want to transform it to float or not, well at the moment we don't care about this because we just want to display it. And here we have just another image of a photovoltaic module. We can also import multiple images at the same time. This works with either marking all the images or just drag and dropping the complete folder. Now I think it's the right time to explain you how this import mechanism works. If we import multiple files, we can decide whether we want to import all of these files together in one display. One display means the file format of every single layer has to be the same. So the, pic uh, the, pixel, the pictures have to have the same size and the same data type. Otherwise, it wouldn't work. If we want to have every pixel, uh, every picture in another display, we go to separate it. If we want to import the currently selected pictures or data files into the current display, we tap this. Or if you want to select one display as a specific input display, we go with this option. At the moment we want to have them all together. However, these might be a bit too many pictures. I mean, in this example it's just 9 files up, but what would be if you would like to see 100 pictures? Maybe we don't have enough RAM to see this. In this case, we just decide not to load the pictures. We go to the side panel and we say, well, we actually don't need to see the complete picture. We maybe are only interested in a range of 1000 to 1500 pixels in X and in Y maybe the same, 1000 to 1500. Setting this allows us to load images much faster, use less RAM and also be much faster in switching between images. As you see here, this is a set of images taken with a different focus level. Unsharp, sharp, unsharp again. This display set might look a bit messy at the moment. Maybe we want to open a new data to session. In data test itself, we don't need to open a new window if we just want to have a new working space. What we will do is we will just click on workspace and on add. Or we do the shortcut control W. Clicking this allows us to have a complete new window with which we can fill with even more pictures. For example, this one. We can go back and forth between the different workspaces with control page down and control page up. We also can do it through the menu bar, next and previous. It is also possible to move displays between different workspaces. Let's move this display, display 1, to the next workspace, which is called 2. Now we only have two displays here in this first workspace. Workspace 1 of 2 
but in workspace 2 we have the moved display again. Data test treats multiple data files within one displays as a different layer. You can see it here in the preference bar. Every file for images is one layer. Every layer has, has its own number. We can cut through all these layers if we want to see what changes over all these different images. For this we have different options. In the toolbar, um, this should be toolbar measurement, we have the average ROI tool, the region of interest. If we take the default options, which would be average in one size, we can easily create a line plot. Let's move this line plot over an edge to see how different focus levels influence the sharpness or the contrast spread within the image. As you can see here, the layer 0, for example, layer 0, is much less sharp, has a much smaller contrast as the high contrast layers named layer 4 and layer 5. Everything works completely interactive. You can change the setup, the view. With clicking on the small a, you can go back into the total. If you just want to see how one pixel changes over time, you can load the toolbar stack. In this toolbar there's a tool called Drill. Let's open a few drills and let's move our drills over the image. Every drill shows you the pixel value over the different layer. As you see there's not much to see. This is just because the pixel itself doesn't change, it's just the sharpness which changes. Another option to see what changes in depth, so what changes for our different layers, is the tool called Slice. With this one, so I clicked twice on it, with this one you can basically slice over all your different images. And as you see here, We start with a very unclear edge, then we have a clearer edge and it gets unclear again. A third option to visualize changes for different layers is the squeeze tool. Squeeze. Here we basically visualize the changes of all different layers to the first layer, the initial layer zero or any other layer that we define as our reference image as a color layer. Color layers are shown in the toolbar called View where you can also set up axis and color bar as an additive on top of your image. You can just hide it with clicking on the tool Overlay and show it again. You can change the color of every single color layer. You can, for example, make it transparent and then it's basically gone. You can also just remove it or you can export the value of this color layer into a new display and edit it there. Every 15 minutes data test saves the current session. You can see the process of saving in the output. If you think 15 minutes is much too close or much too far away from the duration you would like to have for auto saves, you can go to File, Preferences, and then set up the duration of auto save. So 20 minutes in one hour or never. You can also set up how many different temporal states of your data to session you would like to save. What this means I will explain in a second. In the preference menu you can also define whether you want to have a more dark or more bright color scheme. This is the bright one and this is how the dark color theme looks like. The profile, which is currently the profile simple, basically shows which toolbars are shown by default. 
the input menu allows you to set up how you would normally like to import your files together, so all different files in one display, wherever you want to load the files normally, and wherever you want to show the input dialog. This is useful if you don't want to click done every time when you drag and drop a new file into your program. There is also a finger tap for communication, and this you can set up wherever you want to import new files every time when a new file is created in a folder using watch folder. How this works I will show you in the video I think number 5 camera calibration 1. If you want to use an interprocess or interprogram communication program called RabbitMQ then you can use it. But for this you need a RabbitMQ installed in your computer system. If you have it installed, you can control data test, for example, from LabVIEW using the RabbitMQ protocol. So let's see how many different states. Now let me explain you the idea of these different states. Let's first save an empty data test session with Control S. Let's call the session test. See, this state is now saved. Let's now import a picture. We scale it so we actually see something. Here we go. And let's save our file another time. Saving. And this state number two is now saved as well. And let's open another picture. Maybe we also want to change the size of our window. Maybe the color scheme and so on, I think that's the point. And let's save this state now as safe as state number three. And there it is. We can switch between all these different states, and at the moment, as you saw in the preferences, we have maximum three different states. So this allows us to go back actually every time between one step and another and to compare changes. What we did. This was the wrong button. Set state number three. We bring us back to the final stage with our two display docs and our two different color schemes. This is the end of the tutorial number two. The next tutorial will be about measuring structures.